There are many, many defunct film distributors out there, and one that attempted to be a mini-major studio in the 90s and 2000s before being gobbled up by a different mini-major was Artisan Entertainment. While most movie studios start off life as theatrical distributors, Artisan was actually born in the home video market of the early 80s. It went under a couple of different names during that decade, including Family Home Entertainment and USA Home Video. That business operation mainly involved partnering with other companies to release their films and shows on video. Their biggest film supplier at this time was Kuroko Pictures, home of the Rambo movies. Eventually, International Video Entertainment, as it was known at one point, merged with another video distributor, Lieberman Enterprises, becoming Live. This merger actually led to an increase in profits. In 1991, Live announced they had acquired Vestron Pictures, a defunct company whose library primarily consisted of independent films, B-movies, and Dirty Dancing. Kuroko also showed interest in merging with Live a few times, but their financial difficulties prevent them from doing so. Eventually, Live decided they wanted to produce their own films, with one of their inaugural productions being Quentin Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs. They also had a hand in the acclaimed political mockumentary Bob Roberts, but most of the movies released by Live Entertainment through the 90s were often low-budget action movies and comedies that did not exactly grab the audience's attention. In 1998, they went through a restructuring, and the higher-ups decided to rebrand the company and change its name to Artisan Entertainment, which they felt was classier and a better indication of the types of films they wanted to make. While Artisan still released a lot of the same types of action, horror, and comedy movies that Live did, there was an attempt to dive deeper into prestige independent films. One of their biggest finds was a young director named Darren Aronofsky. Artisan picked up his feature debut, Pie, at the Sundance Film Festival, and it turned into a profitable little sleeper. They even released his follow-up film, Requiem for a Dream, which also garnered quite a bit of attention. Artisan also distributed The Cruise, a documentary by Bennett Miller, who would later make a bigger name for himself, directing award winners like Capote and Moneyball. Buena Vista Social Club, a documentary about Cuban musicians, also performed very well and was nominated for an Oscar. Artisan's biggest success story came when they picked up an extremely low-budget horror film at Sundance. Titled The Blair Witch Project, this was one of the first films to use the internet as a major marketing tool to build word of mouth. The movie was advertised as if it was a real documentary, which intrigued audiences. The press from this campaign and the initial response from Sundance and its limited release helped propel The Blair Witch Project into becoming one of the biggest hits of summer 1999. Artisan unsurprisingly saw this as a potential horror franchise for them, and were very quick to put a sequel into production. Unfortunately, Blair Witch 2 was widely hated by viewers, and, well, that was the end of that. Artisan would continue releasing films by top directors like Robert Altman, John Waters, Steven Soderbergh, and John Favreau. However, one of their biggest deals came when they signed an agreement with Marvel to adapt many of their comic book characters. While some of the rights to the big ones, like Spider-Man, X-Men, and The Incredible Hulk, were already sold to the major Hollywood studios, Artisan still got dibs on some good ones. Captain America, Thor, Black Panther, Iron Fist, and Ant-Man are some of the more notable superheroes Artisan had the rights to, along with the Power Pack and Mort the Dead Teenager. What's interesting is that Deadpool was one of the movies announced, but I guess someone did not look carefully at the paperwork, because 20th Century Fox eventually revealed Deadpool was already included as part of the X-Men. The Spider-Man villain, Morbius the Living Vampire, was also included in that initial press release, even though, again, the film rights of that character likely belonged to Sony. While these films entered development, Artisan continued with their usual slate. National Lampoon's Van Wilder did quite well for a low-budget college comedy and helped launch Ryan Reynolds into being a major film actor. Artisan distributed the first VeggieTales movie, Jonah, which pulled in $25 million. When not quite enough to recoup the film's budget, that's actually not bad for a movie based on a preschool series. Artisan otherwise did not seem to be doing that great in the early 2000s, with one box office disappointment after another. It was becoming clear that they would either have to find some additional financial support, file for bankruptcy, or be sold off to another company. Thus, Lionsgate entered the picture and acquired Artisan Entertainment in December 2003 for $220 million. This granted them the rights to all their films, including the Vestron Library, as well as any remaining deals. The completed Artisan films, including the Dirty Dancing prequel Havana Nights, wound up released by Lionsgate, and it was absorbed into the studio. You're probably asking what happened with the Marvel deal. Well, Artisan did produce movies based on The Punisher and Man-Thing, which were eventually distributed by Lionsgate. Lionsgate even greenlit a sequel to The Punisher, released in 2008. The Marvel Association continued after the merger with a series of direct-video animated films featuring their superheroes. 
Eight were released, starting with Ultimate Avengers in 2006 and concluding with Thor Tales of Asgard five years later. As for the characters included as part of Artisan's original agreement with Marvel, the film rights did revert back to the comics company and, well, you know the rest. Although the fact that Artisan saw potential in heroes like Black Panther and Captain America to become marquee movie names does show a certain amount of foresight on their part. Outside of re-releasing their back catalog on DVD and Blu-ray, Lionsgate has not done a whole lot with their library. The one exception was making a third Blair Witch movie in 2016. While Artisan Entertainment is not a film company many people think about today, there was a noble attempt on their part to release independent films that would hopefully resonate with a wide audience, whether it was a prestige picture with heavy themes or a sophomoric comedy. And there is an alternate timeline where they could have helped get the ball rolling on a cinematic universe populated by Marvel superheroes. Artisan did try its best to make a mark, and that certainly deserves some recognition. See you next time.